You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to fulfill another request today. It either came in through my website or my YouTube channel or my Facebook fan page. Someone asked me to do Hawaiian sweet bread. And I remembered that my mom used to buy Hawaiian sweet bread when I was a child. She'd buy it once in a while. It's just a little bit sweet, a little bit of a pineapple flavor. It's a delicious bread, tender. So I, I found a recipe that I think is going to work. I sat there and just calculated the flour to liquid ratio. I'm probably going to have to adjust that a little bit, but this looks like it could be a good and simple recipe to do. So let's make Hawaiian sweet bread. I'm going to be using my stand mixer to knead my dough, to combine everything and knead the dough. You could mix this up in a bowl with a spoon and then knead it by hand. I'm going to use my machine because it's so much easier. So I'm going to combine my water, one cup, 237 milliliters, and my yeast, one tablespoon yeast. And then I'm going to add about a pinch, a good pinch of the sugar that I measured earlier, just to get my yeast started. Dissolve that in the bowl. And then wait about 10 minutes for my yeast to get activated. If the yeast is alive and healthy, I should see foaming on the surface of this water in five to ten minutes. I'm ready to combine pretty near all my ingredients, everything but the flour. So I'm going to start off putting my eggs in there. The eggs are at room temperature. In fact, everything is at room temperature. I left these out last night because I didn't want the anything cold to slow down my yeast. Going to beat those eggs in there with a whisk. And then this is one cup, 237 milliliters pineapple juice. Three quarters of a cup, 150 grams white sugar. One half teaspoon ground ginger. And one teaspoon of vanilla. I know each one of these squirts from my eyedropper bottle is a quarter teaspoon. So, four of those. There's my vanilla in there. I melted one half cup, four ounces, one stick, or 113 grams of whole butter. So it would go in there as a liquid. Another reason why you don't want really cold ingredients because that would just congeal that butter right away. And then finally one half teaspoon salt. All right, I'm ready to move this now to my stand mixer and start adding my flour. I placed my bowl on my stand mixer and I'm going to start off with my mixing paddle. As I incorporate flour a little at a time, when it gets to the point where it starts to get thick and needs kneading, then I'll switch to my dough hook. So you want to add your flour, scoop or two at a time. You'll need six cups of all-purpose flour. That's about 30 ounces or 850 grams. I've incorporated most of my flour. But what I started to get here was kind of a sticky batter. I could see it like pulling away from the side of the bowl in strings. And I could even hear the machine bogging down a little bit. This, this mixer has a pretty powerful motor, but all right, so I'm going to switch to. my dough hook scrape my spatula off and then I'm going to proceed adding flour till I have all my flour incorporated and then I'll start kneading my dough 
Now here's where the flour to moisture ratio becomes an issue. What I'm seeing here is a sticky batter still. There's not enough flour in that. I did check this recipe to see if the ratio was right and I thought it was going to be right. But sometimes you do have to adjust. So I'm going to add flour a rounded tablespoon at a time and incorporate it until I get what I think is going to be a moist and sticky dough. I want it to be a little bit sticky, but I don't want to batter. I think I got my dough to the consistency that I'm looking for, and I added quite a bit of flour actually, at least one cup, 140 grams, if not a little bit more. I kind of judge it visually. I want to see the dough pull away from the side of the bowl, but I also, also want to see some sticking in the bottom of the bowl. That tells me visually that I have a dough that's moist, but it's a bread dough. I even like to see it climbing up onto the dough hook a little bit and then dropping off. So now what I'm going to do next is turn my machine back on again and then knead this using the dough hook for about five minutes. I've kneaded this now for a while. Gonna pull out my dough hook and look at my dough here. And as I said, I wanna see a dough that pulls away from the side of the bowl, but still shows some sticking in the bottom. And this to me is a nice moist dough. So when I write up this recipe for my website, I'm going to increase the flour by one cup. Now I have in the meantime oiled a bowl. You can use vegetable oil, olive oil if you want, but don't use the really good olive oil, the extra virgin, because all you want to do is just lubricate this bowl so that the dough doesn't stick. All right, that looks good. I'm seeing a nice stretch to it. See, that's the glutens that have developed, and that's what I want. Now, I'm gonna let this dough rise for about an hour. I wanna see it rising up well over the top surface of this bowl, the top rim of the bowl. There is my dough. You can see how now this has risen up above the rim of the bowl. That's what I wanted. This took longer than an hour. And the reason why was probably because I started off with room temperature water. Had I started off with warm water, say 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 43 degrees Celsius, I would have activated that yeast a little bit sooner but this is why it doesn't matter whether the yeast, whether the water is warm or not, because the yeast is going to multiply and it is going to cause the dough to rise. Whether it rises quickly or slowly doesn't really matter except in the flavor. The longer it takes for dough to rise, the more the flavor is improved by the yeast action. So now what I wanna do is I wanna punch this down I deflate my dough. And then pull it out of this bowl. Knead this a little bit. Bring it together with it oiled inside like that because it was in an oiled boil, bowl. That dough isn't gonna stick together really well, but if I knead it and pull it together, it will. And you can see it's a little bit sticky, which is what I want. And then I'm gonna divide this in half. Let's see, I think I'll use a knife. You can see bubbles in there. Set that aside. And what I've done in the meantime is 
I've lined baking sheets with parchment paper. And I want to shape these into round loaves. And I'm doing that by pulling the outside in. And what that's going to do is it's going to, I'll do it this way. It's going to stretch this outer surface and give me kind of like a surface tension, which will give me a smoother dough. Okay. And that's what I want. I want a round loaf like that. So I have my other piece to shape. I am in the meantime I'm going to place those both of them on parchment paper and then I'm going to cover them again and let them rise again about maybe an hour until that appears to be doubled in size. You can see how nicely risen these are. My timer just went off. These rose for 45 minutes. In the meantime, I have done two things. One, you'll notice that I moved this one onto a smaller baking sheet. That is so I can bake these both on the same rack in the oven. If you don't have a smaller baking sheet, you can bake them on two racks for say 10-15 minutes and then switch them to finish the baking. I want to do them on the same rack so that I don't have to switch them. I don't know whether to cut the tops or not, so I am going to experiment. You need a really sharp knife to do this. I'm going to cut into that top and just put a, some scoring in this. like so. And then I'm going to bake these now. I've heated my oven up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's equivalent to about 177 degrees Celsius. I'm going to bake these to 25, bake these for 25 to 30 minutes. They should sound hollow when thumped. I always use a digital thermometer when they register an inside temperature above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 900, no, 93 degrees Celsius, 93, then I know that they're done inside. Here are my two loaves of bread. I have to say, I like this one a lot better. with the cuts in it. I think it's a prettier loaf. I have to let these cool down thoroughly now before I can cut into them. As far as baking time, I went longer than I anticipated and that makes sense because the original recipe made three smaller loaves. I made two large loaves. So I actually went for a total of 45 minutes. My loaf now has had a chance to cool down I want to cut into this. I'm just going to cut this one. The other one I'm going to give away. I want to see what this looks like inside. Let's see what I got. Oh, look at that. Beautiful crumb inside. Isn't that beautiful looking bread? All right, the last step is to see how good this tastes. I have buttered a slice of my Hawaiian sweet bread for myself. I'm going to see what this tastes like. A little bit sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's got a nice flavor to it. This is what I remember my mom used to buy, but I made it myself. Hawaiian sweet bread. So. Excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy a little snack. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.